Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we'll see how to defragment uh, fragmented hard disks or disks or DASTY devices in ZOS. Uh, yet like many other or most other operating systems, uh, after a while when you keep uh, allocating and, and removing files or data sets on, on a disk, you will start to have fragmentation, which means that the space is there, but sometimes we may not have a big enough um, contiguous chunk of disk space available, which can uh, deteriorate uh, performance of the operation. So now and then defragmenting is necessary on the mainframe, just as on Linux and Windows, and I would say 98 of 95% uh, of other operating systems. But before we get there, I want to tell you something exciting that's happened in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, today is May 1st, 2019. And uh, as you know, I uh, pointed out variously in uh, the last uh, two months of videos on this channel that we have a petition running. And, um, and, uh, so we reached today over a thousand subscribers, as you can see, 1,001. And we're continuing, of course, to sign up more people. And so today I reached out to uh, the number one of the IBM mainframe division, Ross Mori, and his worldwide sales uh, vice president, uh, Mr. Mike Pereira, whom I had met in Europe last month. I was very surprised. I wrote, I wrote to Ross Mori, and within about 30 minutes, he answered me back that he received the petition and is considering it and will let us know next month in June. So I'm, I'm highly impressed with the very fast response of IBM. It seems there is a new IBM in town nowadays. Uh, you, you know, I, 20 years ago, you would not be able to get such a fast response from somebody this high up within the organization. I think he reports directly to the CEO. So very impressed. Thank you very much, IBM. Thank you, Ross. Thank you, Mike Pereira. Let's get to the subject of this video, which is defragmenting DASTIs or disk devices or volumes on ZOS. As I said, um, just like any most other operating systems, disks can be, get fragmented, especially if you allocate lots of files and then, and then remove them. Some the disk devices don't have that much uh, allocation and removal activity because they're allocated, let's say, the whole DAS is allocated to VSAM or the whole DASD is allocated to DB2 or something like that. But when you have a general population DASD, let's say for users, and they allocate and allocate and remove after a while, you get fragmentation where the space is there, but it's in many, many small blocks. And when that happens, the, the disk heads will have to move back and forth a lot over the surface of the platters and that um, that makes response time from the IO much smaller. Now I also have to say that there is in in today's world most DASTs are actually allocated on SAN devices, uh, storage area networks, where actually the DAST is emulated um, to ZOS. And what ha and the way that those blocks are then written has actually very little to do with the way ZOS sees the uh, the allocation of uh, devices on those on those disks uh, there you know a whole DASD that ZOS sees as one disk may actually be distributed over hundreds or dozens of platters on a SAN um, on an IBM SAN or, or an EMC SAN and so how they deal with it and how the allocation impacts that is something that you can only really know after working with your system a while and maybe there's defragmentation uh, procedures for for those uh, storage devices that the mainframe allocates to, uh, talks to but still there is the ability um, to defragmenting on uh, on DASTIS, even in the most modern uh, operating systems such as zos 2.3 and today we're going to look at it so enough of the talking let's go look at some code I have here a PDS, a petition uh, data set, and I have some, oops, some, uh, some jobs there, and I have, oops, what just happened? Oh, it's in use. Ah, here it is. So, as you can see here, we have a JCL job, obviously, we do this in batch, which will start a, a utility called ADRD SSU, which is the standard storage uh, batch processor on ZOS. Uh, that's how you um, you do your backups, and how you restore backups, and how you reorganize. That's how, for instance, how you would extend a USS or Unix system services, um, ZFS uh, or HFS uh, volume, etc., etc. So everything always starts with ADRD SSU. 
Uh, it is quite memory hungry, so you don't want to be skimpy here on memory, and uh, we have lots of memory, so why don't we just give it 50 megabytes. And we put sysprint here, obviously, um, into held. And this is, this is a system volume that I would like to fragment. But before we get there, let's see how can we, uh, how can we see all the volumes that I have in ZOS. So let's go here. If you go to here to more, to this section, you will see that there is a section that deals with storage management. So two, we can go there and go to section two volumes here and then dash these because we're dealing with dash these, not with tapes and let's say we want to get a list and we want all the space um, information as well so i'll show you again uh, we put in one here we asterisk for all dash these we have and then acquire physical data and space data and you'll see that some have a lot of free space, free space such as this one here, because that's a DAS data that I allocated to it, 91% free. Fragmentation is 37, because I've actually allocated and removed lots of data sets there. So let's see if we can actually uh, defragment this volume here. Okay, let's go back here. And we tell it that this is the volume we want to work with. It's a 3390, obviously. And um, that's uh, how we're going to deal with it now. I don't think we need all that. Yeah, let's remove all that. Okay, so it's actually a very small job. Why? And then let's see what the keywords are here. So, max move um, will be this one, max move. What it does is specifies one to six digit number that specifies the attempt to assemble up to three tracks in a contiguous area. Okay, up to a thousand, um, and then uh, the number specify how many passes to uh, to attempt. So I put an eighty-seven, which may be a lot. Forty passes, and let's tr tell it to try to get five hundred. Okay, and then uh, fast rep. Let's see what that means. Uh, where is fast rep? Oh, because that's an under fast rep. Uh, let's see why is this not documented. Oh, here it is fast replication. Sorry, I missed it. Fast replication specifies whether the use of fast replication is preferred, required, or not desired. Um, preferred specifies that you want to use a fast if possible. Uh, required. So We'll just put in here not required. We'll put in here preferred because we don't know if it's possible here. Okay. Debug. Let's see what that means. Here it is. It's a diagnostic tool. Trace or FRMSG, which is what we're using here, specifies is to issue an informational message to explain why it uh, could not be used. So this will tell us if it cannot do fast replication. Um, and then wait, let's see what wait means. It means just how long to wait between passes, but uh, how many seconds to wait between passes. So uh, we'll wait one second between passes um, and how long we should try again. So let's do 15. So let's see if we can have any impact on this volume by running this now. Save and execute. Job 3123. And uh, start. Five. Let's see the job running here somewhere. I, um, is it running? Sort job name sending. So we should be able to see. Uh, looks like it's already done. So yeah, there is some kind of problem. Uh, completion code eight twenty two. 
Um, completion code 822. Why is that? So in this case, as we just go here, a event code 822. Oops, I don't have internet here. What does it mean? So there's not enough memory. The region is not, we cannot get enough. 50 megabytes is too much. So let's go here with five, which is what we had in the beginning. And let's make it B so we can keep it apart. And so now it should be running. And we should see it here. Oh, not. This also ended. Um, the same thing again. It cannot get into the initiator. Class A. This looks good. Um, oh, here it is, maybe. Okay. Let's try again. 3, 1, 2, 5. Oh, this already ended with max condition cut 8. So there's something wrong with the syntax. Let's see what it didn't like. Has been assigned to command defrag. Initial scan of user control statements. Keyword preferred is improper. So it didn't like preferred. Oh, I know why. Preferred. There's only one F. You probably spot. already saw this while as I was typing it. Let's try again. 3126. Again, something's wrong. Let's find out what's wrong this time. Um, could not be used for this defrag task while reading your VTOG. Command is terminated. VTOG in error prior to processing. Okay, it didn't sound like something in the VTOG. And the VTOG is like the directory entry on every DASD. That's what it didn't like. Um, so let's uh, do swap list. And let's see what's wrong here. Hmm, didn't like this one. So let's try something like fragmentation index. The resident, I don't know if we can do it on the res resident volume, but we could try. Well, sys1 has a lot of fragmentation. We could try this one. Z9 res2. Okay. Let's put it here. Let's try again. You see that it's highly dependent on what's on those volumes. Um, it is assigned on its own storage management in COS. Okay. And this went through much better, only a warning. Okay. So yes, this went, oh, there was an IOR while reading your VTOG. And again. Oh no, that's not us. We're still running, I think. Let's see where the M is. Let's put in a C so we can keep it apart. It's here running, as you can see here. Doing lots of IOs, 3,000 start IOs per second, and it's done. Um, so yes, yeah, so we told it to go through 15 times, let's say 99, so we can see it. Um, and let's put a 90 here. Let's try to get larger. This is, again, this tells how, how large we would like to obtain. So let's run this again. And we should see it running here. This one, look at this line here. And you see how many IOs it's doing. And we can see how far it's gone by just selecting it. Yeah, you see, it's processing and it's done. So let's go to see the output. Of course, it's a lot more output because it tried many more times. And this went fine. So we could now go and see if the fragmentation is better. Two, 
we go to volumes one for DASD and process it again and this is the volume we just processed and yes this has now zero fragmentation index I don't remember what it was before but uh, zero is always good so this has no more fragmentation um, we could try this one to see what's going on with this one so let's put it here and that's a good thing about putting it outside as a DD statement because you don't have to change the code let's run this again job 3130 oh, it's already done so so this has one one fragmentation index let's do it again well, still one <laughs> but maybe that's why it finished so early it can't defragment any more than that uh, let's see what it says in the output let's go to 5 SDSF and let's look here what it did okay so it started here right this just repeats our input and then let's go down and down 10. Um, it says free cylinders 45, free tracks only 14. Oh, that's why I couldn't defragment because there's only 45 cylinders available on this. Now, obviously, if you don't have a lot of space, how can you rearrange? Because it's almost like the towers of Hanoi. Sometimes you have to move something to a different place before you can move it where you want to move it. And so if there's not a lot of space, um, it's not going to be able to do a very good job. But percent free space, oh, just 1%. Yeah, that's why. There's just not enough space to modify things. And in this case, if you really wanted to fragment it, I mean, one fragmentation index of one is not bad. But if you really wanted to, you would probably offload it to tape and read it in again. And then you would, in this case, in this way, you would remove all fragmentation. Uh, but this just shows you how this works. Um, it's very simple. I'll post the JCL for this job in the description below this video so you can play with it if you have a ZOS system. Again, remember that storage has changed a lot. Uh, DASD, the meaning of a DASD deep, deep down is not the same if you have, um, like everybody does of course nowadays, a, a, um, uh, a storage area network such as EMC or from, uh, from IBM or any of the others because the way they actually store data is significantly different than what ZOS thinks is happening. Also, if you have a, like I do, uh, I have a ZB PDT mainframe uh, in, at home um, that I bought from IBM. And there, of course, files are just Linux uh, images. That's these whole volumes are just Linux files. And so, again, the meaning of defragmenting there is quite different than what the operating system thinks it's going on. because those devices are just presenting emulated 3390s to ZOS and ZOS doesn't know they're actually residing on storage systems that actually have nothing to do with 3390s. But this is all. Uh, if you have any questions how this works, please post um, in the description below this video. Um, if you have any general comments about defragment and defragmenting or fragmentation problems, um, then I don't know if, by the way, uh, you can also defrag on Windows. Um, you just type your defrag and I say first you just say optimize and first it analyzes just like defrag here and then it starts to optimize but in my case it says fragmentation is not a problem let's say let's analyze this disk drive the drive D is where I store store all the all the videos I make <laughs> so and now, yeah, zero percent fragmented. I think maybe I run a, a periodical job to defragment, but these are not fragmented at all. But you could, do, they have the exact same procedure here on Windows as well. So it's just something that needs to be done. And um, and so uh, doing this on your disk can sometimes accelerate uh, the performance. And um, and I think in one of the future videos, I'll go into ADR DSSU a lot more. For instance, how to do backups with ADR DSSU. You can, you can dump whole disk devices into tape images or tape, virtual or physical tape. And so maybe I'll make a video. But I don't have a physical tape on my, on my uh, IBM's ZPDT mainframe. But I have, um, I have emulated tape, virtual tape. And that's just the same procedure. So maybe we'll do that in a future video. Anyway. Uh, 
Please subscribe to the Emotion's Mainframe channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Post all your comments, why you like the mainframe, why you don't like it, what you hate about it, what you love, why you want to learn about it. And um, we will all keep up with responding to your comments. Thank you very much and goodbye.